f of x is equal to 1 plus 14x over 1 minus x times 1 plus 2x, where the modulus of x is less than a half. Part A, express f of x in partial fractions. So we're going to rewrite this as a over 1 minus x plus b over 1 plus 2x. We're now going to get our common denominator. So we've already got a 1 minus x here. So we just need to get, we just need to multiply by the 1 plus 2x. We have the b term. We've already got the 1 plus 2x there. So we just need to multiply by the 1 minus x. Now we've got the same denominator on the bottom of each of these fractions, which means that our numerators should be the same as well. So let's copy that down and on the bottom here. The 1 plus 14x is equal to a times 1 plus 2x plus b times 1 minus x. And we're going to make a substitution. We're first going to say let x equals 1. The reason why I've picked 1 is it makes this bracket here become 0 because 1 minus x, 1 minus 1 will become 0. So if that bracket becomes 0, then the b term becomes 0, and it's much easier for me to work out the a term. So on the left-hand side here, we've got 1 plus 14 times 1. So 1 plus 14 is 15. On the right-hand side, I've got a times 1 plus 2 times 1. So a times 3 is 15. a times 3 is 15, therefore a is 5. So we know that a is 5. Let's now work out b. The substitution I'm going to make now is going to be x is minus 1 half. The reason why I'm picking minus 1 half is that's going to make this bracket here become 0 to allow me to work out b. So on the left hand side, I've got 1 plus 14 times minus a half. Well, half of 14 is 7. So it's minus. So this is minus 7 plus the 1 is minus 6. So the left hand side is minus 6. This term here will be 0. And we'll just get b times 1 minus minus 1 half. So 1 minus minus a half is the same thing as 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 over 2. So b multiplied by 3 over 2 is minus 6. Times both sides by 2. And we find the 3b is minus 12, therefore b is minus 4. So we have managed to split our single fraction up into its two partial fractions, which is 5 over 1 minus x, minus 4 over 1 plus 2x. That's my answer for part A. Part B. Hence find the exact value of the integral of f of x from 1 sixth to 1 third, giving your answer in the form ln p, where p is a rational number. So we want to integrate our 5 over 1 minus x 
minus 4 over 1 plus 2x with respect to x between the limits of 1 sixth and 1 third. Right, now the 5 over 1 minus x, that's going to integrate with a logarithm to be 5 ln 1 minus x. But by the reverse chain rule, I'm going to have to divide by minus 1. So dividing by minus 1 will actually make that a minus 5, not a plus 5. Then we've got the minus 4, ln 1 plus 2x. But by the reverse chain rule, I'm going to have to divide by 2, because that's the derivative of the inside function. So divide by 2. The 4 divided by 2 is 2. Right, we now need to substitute our limits in. Right, so first let's substitute the one third. So we'll get minus 5 ln of 1 minus one third minus 2 ln of 1 plus 2 times a third. Right, so that's substituting the one third in. Now let's substitute the one sixth in. So minus five ln one minus one sixth minus two ln one plus two times one sixth. Right, let's go through each of these and simplify. So the one minus one third is two thirds. The one plus two thirds is five thirds. The one minus one sixth is five sixths. And the 1 plus 2 over 6 is the same thing as 1 plus 1 third, which is 4 over 3. Now, notice that all of these moduluses will make the insides negative, as I make them positive, if they're negative. But notice that they're all actually positive in the first place. The two thirds is positive, the five thirds is positive, the five sixths is positive, and the four thirds is positive. So actually, I don't need those moduluses there. Right, we do need to try to simplify this the best we can, though. Right, let's get a bit of more space. Because the next thing we're going to do is expand up the brackets and collect up some like terms. Right, so our first term here is the minus 5 ln 2 thirds. Then we've got the minus 2 ln 5 thirds. Then the minus minus, so we can collect those two, uh, multiply those, that's going to be a plus 5 ln 5 sixths. We've then got the minus minus, so that's going to be a plus 2 ln 4 thirds. Now I'm just going to restructure the way I've written this slightly, just to make it a bit simpler. This is a positive, so I'm going to write this at the front. 
I say it's positive there. Then I'm going to write this term next because it's a negative and crucially they both have a coefficient of 5. 5 here, 5 here. So that's nice because then I can use the laws of logarithms to combine those two things together. Next, I'm going to write this term because it has a positive. And then I'm going to write this term on the end. So the twos, the terms of the twos at the front will be grouped as well. Right, I'm going to factorise this 5 outside. So I could rewrite this, factorising the 5 outside would be like that. And similarly, if I factorise this 2 outside, would be like this. Right, now I've got the inside, I've got ln 5 over 6 minus ln 2 thirds. So that's going to allow me to bring those two logarithms together by dividing. 5 sixths divided by 2 thirds is the same thing as 5 over 4. Over here we've got ln 4 thirds uh, minus ln 5 over 3. So again, we can use the division law. The 4 thirds divided by 5 over 3. So we'll get 2. ln 4 thirds divided by 5 over 3 is 4 fifths. So we've got it down into two simple logarithms now. Just creating a little bit more space. And then we can combine these two logarithms together to be a single logarithm, because that's what the question asks for. It asks for the, the answer in the form LNP, where P is rational. So I need to try and combine these two separate logarithms together to be a single logarithm. Right, now one thing to notice, just look at the inside here. That's 5 over 4. This is 4 over 5. They are reciprocals of one another. So what I could do, if I wanted to flip this around, I could do that with a negative power. So what I'm saying is 4 over 5 is the same thing as 5 over 4 to the power minus 1. Which is quite useful because then I could take that minus 1 and move it to the front. So I would get... 2 times the minus 1, which would be minus 2. And crucially, notice that the insides are the same now. So, 5 ln 5 over 4 minus 2 ln 5 over 4 is 3 ln 5 over 4. And finally, last step. I'm, I need it in this form. I can't have the 3 at the front. So let's take that 3, move it up there to be a power, and we'll get ln 5 over 4 cubed, which is the same thing as ln 125 over 64. And that is my answer for part B. Moving on to part C now. So part C says, use the binomial expansion to expand f of x in ascending powers of x up to and including the term in x cubed. 
Well, let's remember that f of x can be written in this form. Seems like a long time ago where I wrote it like that. So if I can expand each of those separately, I can then take them away to get my expansion for f of x. So let's remind ourselves how we can expand those two things. So to remind ourselves of the binomial formula, it's this. This is what you get given in the formula booklet. The 1 plus x to the power n. So I need to make sure that my two terms to expand look like that. 1 plus x to the power n. So the first term, the 5 over 1 minus x. Right, we'll rewrite that as 5 times 1 minus x to the power minus 1. Double check to make sure that this is 1, which it is. So this is our n and this is our x. So leave the 5 at the front and let's use the binomial formula. And we're going up to the x cubed term. So the first term will just be 1. Our second term will be n, which is minus 1, times x, which in this case is minus x. Our second term will be n times n minus 1 over 1 times 2 times our x term squared. And then our third term will be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 1 times 2 times 3 times minus x cubed. <coughs> right, let's go through and simplify each of those. We'll leave the 5 at the front for now. Right, first term was just 1. Second term, we've got minus 1 times minus x. So that's just a plus x. Next term, minus 1 times minus 2 is plus 2 divided by 2. So that's just 1. 1 times minus x squared will be plus x squared. And then minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3, so that's minus 6, divided by 6 is minus 1. We've then got the minus x cubed, so minus x times minus x times minus x will give a minus x cubed. The minus 1 times the minus x cubed is plus x cubed. Times each of those by 5. So this is our expansion for this. So I can write it instead of this. Right, that's our first expansion. We now need to do exactly the same thing with the second expansion. So, again, create some space. Right, so we've got the 4 over the 1 plus 2x. So we're going to rewrite that as 4 times 1 plus 2x to the power minus 1. Again, just double check to make sure that is a 1, which it is in this case. So that's good. So we don't need to do any factorising. 
So let's get straight into expanding the 1 plus 2x to the power minus 1 with the binomial formula. So the first term is 1. Our second term is n times x, which in this case is 2x. Our next term is n times n minus 1 over 1 times 2 times our x squared. And the third term is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 divided by 3 times 2 times 1 times the x cubed. Right, let's simplify. Our first term is a 1. Our second term is minus 1 times 2x. So minus 2x. Our third term is minus 1 times minus 2, which is plus 2, divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 2x squared, so 1 times 4x squared is 4x squared. And then we've got minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 which is minus 6, divided by 6 is minus 6, sorry, it's minus 1, sorry, not minus 6, the minus 6 divided by 6 is minus 1. Then we have the 2x cubed, so 2x times 2x times 2x is 8x cubed which when multiplied by that minus 1 gives minus 8x cubed. Times each of those by 4, so the 4 times the 1, the 4 times the minus 2x, the 4 times the 4x squared, the 4 times the minus 8x cubed. So this is the same thing as this, so I can replace that here. Notice there has to be a minus in the middle. So minus bracket 4 minus 8x plus 16x squared minus 32x cubed. Right, let's get our answer then. So we've got the 5 minus 4 which is 1. We've got the 5x minus minus 8x. So 5x plus 8x is 13x. We've got the 5x squared minus 16x squared. So minus 11 x squared. And then finally we've got the 5x cubed minus minus 32x cubed. So 5x cubed plus 32x cubed is 37x cubed. And so this is the first four terms of my expansion.